And we are back with another Black with No Cream podcast. New episode every single Sunday. I'm your host, Ben Haggerty, a.k.a. Ben Real vs. World. Today we have my good friend and popular YouTuber creator, Josh Inobakri, a.k.a. Olufemi Tutorials, on the podcast. Josh owns a popular go-to YouTube channel that specializes in creating content for those who are interested in video production, which makes a lot of sense because he literally quit being a full-time teacher in order to pursue YouTube full-time. Teaching is in his blood, and I fuck with that. Josh's channel has over 138,000 subscribers, which he rightfully deserves because he puts in so much fucking work to create the videos that he releases. His website, LuxuryLeaks.com, has grown into a one-stop shop for tools such as sound packs, light leaks, project files to download and learn from. Josh has everything on that site. Um, and I gotta admit, the sound pack is sick. He teamed up with an engineer and they custom made 100 sounds that you can use in your videos for like 60 bucks, I wanna say. I He gave it to me for free, shout out to Josh. And I use it all the time in the videos that I make. And I promise you, dog, it is not going to disappoint. So you should buy it. This is also a way that Josh is able to sustain an income while he creates content for you to learn from. If you are a fan of Josh and you want to learn more about how he got to where he is today, this podcast episode is for you. If you're a fan of video production, this podcast episode is for you. If you're a fan of taking risks, like quitting your job to pursue something new, then keep listening to this, homie. I promise you, you're going to love this episode. If this is your first time tuning into the podcast, you're probably wondering, what does Black Window Cream stand for? Black Window Cream is a private content creator group fueled by caffeine, or at least I take my coffee, Black Window Cream, but you can drink or not drink whatever caffeine you fuck with and still be a part of our community. We're a private group on Facebook open to creators of all kinds, aka if you make videos, if you're a photographer, if you do marketing, if you're a YouTuber, manager, editor, blah, 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 blah. All creators are welcome. Our private group has been growing rapidly. We have a shit ton of members working together by sharing content, asking for feedback, passing tips and tricks along to one another with the goal of pushing each other to become the best motherfucking content creators on earth and you can join our group if you want to by going to bwnc.com slash join we would love to fucking have you please join if you're interested in supporting black window cream please go to bwnc.com slash merch we got hats shirts stickers pins all that shit it's available in the store i appreciate if you buy anything it means the world to me it keeps this thing floating um if you don't have money i get it just share this link on iTunes or YouTube to any of your friends that you think could benefit from learning something from these conversations or from the private group. Whatever you can to promote it, please do it. I fucking fuck with you. Thank you. All right, that's it. Enjoy the work week. Keep creating. Make sure to tune in every Sunday for a new Black Window Cream episode. And without further ado, I bring to you my interview with Josh and the most epic podcast intro ever created right motherfucking now. <laughs> Attention. If you stop this podcast recording at any time, you will die. I don't want to die. Do you want to live? Yeah. You have 24 hours to share this podcast with five people or you will die. I'm kidding. You won't die. You're just weak shit for not sharing. And the winner of the best motherfucking podcast goes to... Goes to... Goes to... Black with no cream. What do you think? It's so fucking dumb and so fucking Ben Haggerty. I knew you would say that. And we are back with another Black With No Cream podcast today with a very special guest. I say that every time. They're all special guests to me, but this one's very this special. This incredibly special guest. It's super incredibly super special, special guest. He is a, a YouTube star, most famous for doing the Dougie and also <laughs> yeah, for not doing any of those things. Uh, Josh, Josh, answer. welcome to the channel. What's up, Ben? How you doing, dude? Ben, I am extremely excited. I've been waiting for this for a while. Black With No Cream. Shout out to my mom. Shout out to your mom. I'm on the, I'm on the podcast. Mom, look, mama, we made it. We um, made it. Josh is an incredible teacher. Like, in general, mm. in life, not only are you a good human being, but you're a very talented teacher, and, which is ironic because you... Maybe it's not ironic. I guess I don't know the definition of the term anymore. <laughs> that you <laughs> actually were teaching at a school. Yeah, I taught, I taught for three years, Santa Barbara City College. Shout out to the... Uh, What's our mascot again? Yeah, what's your mascot, dude? I forgot. <laughs> Shout out to all my students, Matt Academy. Um, yeah, it was okay. It was awesome. We're gonna get there, but and, and this is also just a forewarning. Josh just texted me like an hour and a half ago and was like, "Hey, man, I'm over like in the area. We should like make a YouTube video or do the podcast." And I was like, "Let's do the podcast." So he came over. I had it set up, and he sat down and. I just hit record and he's very uh, nervous right now because I told him I'm not editing anything out and I also did not prep him on what we're going to do. I don't have about. any questions at all. No questions. So, so 
Um, but yeah. I mean, I just want to talk to you about, uh, you know, how you got to, you basically have gone from teaching at a school, mm-hmm. like long story short, teaching at a school, um, while doing that, interning at a production company in LA. So you're mm-hmm. driving like an hour or something, yeah, an hour and a half, maybe every day to come here to work, which right. is where I met you. And then, uh, then you leave there, go back, quit teaching. Basically, uh-huh. start working for another production company. Right. You end up leaving that after a while, and right. now you are a full time fucking YouTuber. Full time YouTube, incredible. That yeah. is insane, right? That's it's, why it's, I wanted to bring you on this because yeah. his story is crazy. All right, like it, it basically it goes back to when we were both at uh, Riveting. We were working on Chris's doc. We were working on the Chris and Brown the doc. Eight royalty videos. Eight Chris Brown music videos as well. And yeah. Josh popped in as an intern. It was just like, hey guys. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> We're like, who the hell is this? Good kid? times. Two years ago. Two years ago, yeah. So he yeah. just pops in and uh, just your presence overall. You walked in and like generally wanted to like be involved or learn, and you weren't annoying about it. It was just like organic. I don't know why. We just like hey, that kid's jo- like nice. he's cool. Like we like him. Nice. But you came in blast. and um, and you and and then I didn't even realize you were an intern right away because <laughs> you were just talk more than the interns ever talked. And when we were talking, we, you and me uh-huh. went to like go get some coffee or something. I don't remember what it was. And uh-huh. you were like, oh, yeah. I'm a, uh, I was like, so what school are you at? And you're like, well, I'm at a school, but I'm a teacher, uh-huh. which blew my mind. Because every other intern that came through those doors were like 19 or something, like 19 or 20. You know what I mean? Like brand yeah. new students. What were you teaching? So I taught two classes, um, video, two 100 level classes, video production and video editing. And, um, yeah, it was incredible. Did you go to school to become a teacher? So, no, I didn't go to film school. Uh, I went to school, got my bachelor's in business marketing mm. um, up in Portland, Oregon. And, um, yeah, got in as a, an adjunct at a community college. Did you, like, was that your goal? Did you plan on that? Or did that just happen? Like, did you just, how the hell did you become a teacher randomly? It's, like, incredible. So, like, I, I hated public speaking. I always loved video production, but I didn't think that I'd ever be able to actually speak and actually teach what I what I knew yeah so that first like few months of being a teacher was actually kind of hard like I had to figure out how to teach right I ended up really understanding that I was actually pretty pretty good at it had a lot of help along the way yeah um, from fellow teachers and administration and stuff so it was actually from the fact that I was able to teach that I realized that I could translate that to the internet to mm. YouTube and so if I didn't have that teaching job I probably wouldn't have had a YouTube channel i think i could say so then what was it that made you go and get that internship at riveting when you started like interning in la um okay so uh a lot of you guys may know of a video director called colin tilly Mm. colin tilly is one of the best uh, music video directors out there in my opinion um colin worked for riveting um for i don't know how many years um but uh so through that i knew about the company Knew about a lot of the videos that they did. And um, yeah, I just wanted to work somewhere sick in the industry. You um, already you already had like a job. Like what was the idea? It was like... Oh, I wanted to specifically work in the music video industry. So your goal was to not... Was the teacher thing only going to last like a little bit? Or were you just doing that in, like... You know what I mean? Was that an in-between right. job or... Uh, it was just a job. Like it, it wasn't just a job. It was a... But it was. I yeah. knew I wasn't going to teach in Santa Barbara forever. Mm-hmm. Santa Barbara's like... For those of you guys not from LA, it's like two hours north of downtown. But it's so really like it was amazing. Far. It was it was amazing. So let me make sure I'm saying this right. That was <laughs> he literally hates that Santa was Barbara. literally one of the best jobs of my life. I st- those are still some of my best friends. I still keep in contact with so many of my students that are actually down here now oh, studying film. Um, but um, but Santa Barbara is kind of far, so it it it, it worked out. Um, started doing more stuff in LA, including that internship. Mm-hmm. Um, internship was a part-time position, so of course I was doing other stuff too. Right, but I mean it was and, crazy yeah. because you told me you were literally every day he would be at the office, and we were just editing a documentary, so we're there 24 hours a day pretty much. And he would just pull up and he'd be there almost as long as us. And then he's like, "Yeah, I just got to go back to Santa Barbara. It's about two oh, hours yeah. drive." Let me explain actually distances. So, um, I was living in Oxnard. Those of you guys know Ventura County, which is about an hour north of downtown Los Angeles. Santa Barbara is another hour north of Oxnard. So in the morning, I drove from Oxnard up to Santa Barbara to teach. 
and I drove two hours from Santa Barbara down to Beverly Hills to uh, to God answer shit like every other day. I think <laughs> that shit blew my mind. I was like, "What?" It's like crazy, there were yeah. some people that were there that were just like, "Man, I don't really think I want to do film in like my life." And I was like, "Why are you here?" And I don't know. It's just an option. And he's like, "Dude, I this is sick. Like, I want to be in this world. Like, I love creating." And, and you guys is- truly became like some of my best friends yeah. too. Honestly, like. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Josh was great. Like there were yeah. some interns that were annoying as fuck, but I, Josh, I wanted to be with you guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, I loved it when you were te- you were like telling me about the things that you were teaching, and and so you'd be teaching these kids like film, and I. So this is a high school, right? You said it was a high school. Uh, like junior high. interesting. Okay, so I was a community college teacher, teaching a college course at a school within a school that was a high school. So all my students were high schoolers. If that makes sense. But they were getting college credit. Oh, yeah. Dope. Mad Academy. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Mad Academy? Mad Academy with two Ds. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's sick. So these kids were, you know, were they taken as like an elective? Like the classes, that is that what it is? Or is this is the program designed? It was a program designed for um, creatives. So um, students were given kind of a, a huge swath of like different creative options, like I had to take photography classes, video production classes, um, and then by the senior year, they they were pretty well, hmm. yeah. So exposed to. Do you, would you say industry. is it fair to say that a lot of your teachings kind of inspired these kids to? You know, you said some of them are down here in LA now, going to film school and stuff like that. Did you? Would you say that you could have influenced them to have you know taken that route or taken it a little more serious than they were at the time? I mean, me in high school, I don't. If I met yeah. you, it would have been sick. If I the person that was teaching me, what didn't know how to set up a tripod. So, dang, yeah, no. So like, I I did have the privilege of, you know, a lot of a lot of these. I don't want to even call them kids. They were, you know, young adults. They were a lot of them. I had always loved film production, video production, video editing, but I can't say that there were a good group of them that had never done video production before. And then after taking my class, um, I saw like something spark like yeah. in them as far as like, oh dang, this is actually feasible. I can video edit. You know, they had all this creativity locked into them that they were able to find the like, uh What did you guys have? Did you guys have like a room with like computers for everyone to edit on and cameras to rent or something? Or was yeah, it- so so this facility was better than the video production department or major in my college wow uh they had <clears throat> tons of dslrs um different studios complete g e setups as far as group and electric you know lighting rigging yeah, setups yeah. is yeah damn it's cool this is way better than my like, no i know i was like jealous i was like y'all don't even know what you have yeah so yeah i do also want to point out right now if you're watching this on YouTube. If you're not and you're listening to this on like iTunes or something, I'm sorry, but you're like my first guest. That and it's funny because you YouTube for a living now, so you're you're built to look at the cameras. And so like every time we talk, Josh answers to oh, you guys in, yes. the, in on YouTube. Yes. But no one at, like rappers and shit or whoever else I've had on here, like uh, yo, they're just like man. talking to yeah. me and just chilling. Blah blah. blah. Yeah, they really don't look yeah. over there. You're just like, yes, <laughs> I will look over at A, B, and C cameras. <laughs> yeah, that's why I got them. So you know, keep talking to them. Um, yeah. So so you know, you start. I, I like. I, this is kind of like the last note. I, I I just like to go off things I remember. But um, yeah. you talked to me about how luxury leagues came to be and you were mm. creating these light streak packs in like real life by teaching your kids how to do this in class and then you're like yeah like, yeah i taught my kids how to create real like uh film burns and shit right yeah i mean so i learned how i knew how to do it before mm-hmm. and luxury leagues had been set up before oh it was set up before um but yeah like um yeah should i should i get into like what luxury leaks is even yeah i was just gonna say yeah, yeah. before we get into it you should tell them luxury leaks.com luxury leaks. is luxury so leaks. it's it's kind of goes in hand, hand in hand with my youtube channel so i teach on youtube and then i sell digital products on luxury leaks.com so um a lot this of the time it makes a full-time living people this is yeah so support that way support please though like I, I could go into depth as far as Guys, if you are starting a YouTube channel, YouTube is not going to pay your bills by itself. Like, unless you you have like a million views for every video that you're posting every day, AdSense, Google AdSense isn't going to pay your bills. So what you got to do is you got to make sure that you have kind of a a plan as far as selling digital products. That's kind of what I do. Um, it's what a lot of tutorial channels kind of do. 
and you just got to make sure that those products are worth buying. If they aren't worth buying, people aren't going to buy them. Right. So, so an example of this would have been the go back, back to like the light leaks. The, yeah, light leaks, which is that the that was like basically the first real products that you were. That selling? was the first. Yeah. So what? What? How? Did, explain it. What did you do? Because I remember. Yeah. I think you gave me a pack, and it was like thirty light leaks. Like five bucks. For five bucks. That's how much he sells them for. Yeah. So, but it came with really high quality, like full HD. I don't think it was 4K at the time. No, no. Yeah, it was just HD. 1080, yeah. yeah, it's sick. And I used that shit in Chris's doc, I think. Yeah. Maybe a couple music he used a, videos. He used a lot of stuff, yeah. I yeah. was like, I was so sick. I tried to use Josh's shit in everything almost. Like, I was like, hey, someone's doing this music video. Send me a sound pack real quick. So it's I an honor. Get it's them like, to do the. Um, dang, yeah. But you were like literally having these kids learn how to do this and then hmm. using that to like distribute on the internet, weren't you? No, I'm not. I didn't sell any of theirs. Oh, you didn't. Should've, That's why I thought should've. your hustle was I super lit. Because I was like, yeah, those students, you know. Yeah. Hey, you guys get to. They, learn they how to pay make the this. bills. I'm gonna sell this for five dollars. No, but so no, so like I had already had a pack that had been on on lucky. <laughs> What would that idea. be funny though? Like, I, that's what I it thought happened. Out. I really thought that's out. what happened. I was like, damn, he was just selling these kids' products. That's smart. Yo, yo. Pay for that gas, this I mean, four hour round trip. Full, full cycle. But so, what? You basically were like, you would do that, sell it on your website, and then be like, oh, this is cool. I could teach the kids how to make these. And yeah, then, how are you, yeah. how are you going about do- doing it? You were taking the lenses off of cameras and shining it's, it's, lights. It's crazy. So, there's, there's no one way to make a light leak. Those of you guys that don't know what light leaks are, light leaks are basically. It's kind of like a stylized overlay that you can put over your footage. It's kind of like light flares that are leaking in and out, creating this really cool look. And you can make it by, basically what you do is you create the light leaks on a black background. So you go in a dark room and then you have your camera on and then you can put like glass and stuff in front of the lens, shine flashlights to kind of diffract the light. Or you can actually take the lens off and do this thing called like lens, lens whacking and kind of let light like seep in and hit the sensor and it's kind of cool. Trippy. And then um, it's all on a black background, and then you place that footage with the light leaks on the black background on top of your footage in, in your video editor of choice, and then you use the screen blending mode to take all the black out to make it transparent, and then you're just left with the light leaks on, on the footage. So if you're a person that's looking for like a cool transition or something, you can use these to get through. Like, you know, It was really popular like a couple years ago. It was super popular back yeah. then. I wouldn't say people are using them as often now. Yeah. Um, which I think are going to come back and be like this like new wave. I'll say this. They were very popular back in the day. I would be more of a person to say, make them in camera. Make them in camera? Now. Yeah. As far as using flashlights and shit like that. As far as going, light yeah. leaks. Uh, so. I did, I did, yeah. L- that's such a good trick to use. And if you're a videographer and you're looking for that, even photographers, like, Play, yeah. with, play with flashlights directly in your lens while you're shooting. Might be hard to pull focus while you're doing it, but you can figure it out. Yeah, that's cool. So you were selling those for five dollars a piece. Were you seeing much revenue from that at the time? Uh, no, like, not back then. Because um, when did you start taking YouTube like actually serious? Like you started becoming serious with it. The whole time. So I've I've been doing it for two years. I've been serious the whole time. Um, I had luxury leaks alongside the channel the whole time. It wasn't until I did this weird thing, and I'm not a business person. I'm starting to become one more and more, but I didn't really know any. I'm still learning so much. I had, I made the luxury leaks, the the light leaks free, for a, like a month period. <laughs> I, I was like, I, I'm just gonna make it free. I wasn't making a lot. It was five bucks each, so I made it free. Um, and then for some reason, that segment drew drove my traffic up like crazy on my website. And shortly after that, I put like my first project files on, and that's I guess where that engagement started, where I actually started making a little bit of money. Right. Um, it's so funny, guys. Like how like in your mind you're like, it's like you put out a product and you're like, I feel like people could actually benefit from this project product, and if people actually bought this product, it would support me. I'd be able to put out more content for free and not have to worry about bills, whatever. And I feel like people would actually like it, but. One of the biggest issues is actually just getting the word out that mm. the product exists. So right. it's interesting. That's part of like the um, the business end, I guess, as far as like that promotion kind of. So what would have been some like um, some ways around that that you found work for you right now, as far as getting the word out that it exists? Because I mean, you've gone on to release so many projects. Now files it's, it's and, been yeah, it's like it's a whole other yeah. other world now. Um, he has an amazing sound pack that just came out. You collaborated with, uh, yeah, who was uh, it? 
um, AVA. AVA. AVA Music, yeah. So basically, Josh and the AVA Music collaborated and put together a sound pack that was 100 sounds. It's like 100. 100 sounds 100, or yeah. whatever. Um, I think it started off at like 100 bucks for 100 sounds, which was yeah. high quality sounds. They were fucking great. Um, yeah. Now it sounded like 60. Yeah, 60 now it was like bucks, a yeah. discount on your code and you can get it for like 60 bucks. But yeah. things like that, you, you started to realize okay cool these could offset costs and allow me to focus more on the channel because your content is not just like my youtube content where i just throw up a camera and run my mouth and then cut out some stuff and post it real quick you do like actual research as if you are still a teacher teaching at the community college like where you had to pay i learned a lot about your content so this guy i love the way you edit things you have i want to edit my i want my youtube videos to look and be entertaining like your youtube videos and I want my um, videos to be smart, like your videos. <laughs> no, nah, it's super smart. Because hey, no. you literally you, like yeah. you, you, you just take so much time, and that's probably because I'm always pushing. I'm like Josh, especially when you started working more. Um, like you were working with uh, Ironwell Productions. Mm-hmm. Shout out to the guys down there, Josh and Troy. Um, Josh so and you were, Chris. Yeah, you or Josh and Chris. Josh, Troy, Chris, Jesus. Simon. Everyone, <laughs> everyone at Ironwell, literally all. There's like I walked down one time, and there was like eight people there, and they're all just on their computers and yeah. Um, but I would say that you were working and being busy with them down there. And at one point I was sitting there like, yo, you need to post more. Cause that started yeah. to become a thing. You had a Casey Neistat at the time that was doing daily vlogs and no one had seen that before. So now everyone starts replicating that. And you were doing like one every like week and a half, two weeks. Sometimes it would be longer spread out after when you start getting really busy at work. Yeah. And I remember hitting Josh. It's like, yo dude, you have to post more. I'm telling you like now is the time to do this. Yeah. Uh, that I, I, Let's get in. That's so good. As far as like, when is it smart to quit your job and do this full time? Yeah. So Ooh, much, I like these questions. That's I love this. This is like my life. Like so much of because a lot of you guys are in that same spot. You guys are working full time jobs, and you guys have a YouTube channel, and you're like, "There's potential here," but it seems stupid to quit your job. I want to shout out Ironwell because mm-hmm. they were. I was working there for two years. They literally paid my bills, like paid my rent, buy bought my my new car through them. Like it's like incredible. Um, you guys worked on Mac. I mean, you worked on tons of really cool stuff. Them. What kind of projects were you guys working on? Just so you, they can understand what kind of production company they were. Uh, we worked Art. on a lot of corporate stuff. Um, lots of uh, uh, like music video stuff, a little bit. Um, like ad stuff. You did like advertising stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yep. But um, you were, you, they had like a cool office down. Uh, I don't remember what. In uh, Irvine. Irvine. Irvine, Orange County. Yeah. Down there. Got a little space in the back. You could shoot. They had like the green screen, the drop down yeah. stuff, all that shit in the back. It was pretty sick. So yeah. And I mean, they're just, they're, they still are my best friends too. So it's like, it was really awesome. So, um, so I was working there, but at the same time I was doing YouTube and I was like, this is a stable job. I feel like I shouldn't do YouTube because YouTube is just so many unknowns. But um, I saw I was growing and I'm like, I know that I'm going to have to just quit all of my traditional work and just do this full time. And I made that jump and it, I'm trying to, I made that jump and it took like, I think maybe two months of like, honestly not, I mean like you have bills that are like piling up. It's like, okay, how's this going to work? Did I make the right decision? Did I make the right decision? And it was just so sweet. Like, the guys over there were so supportive. They're like, hey, Josh, we know you're doing this. Don't worry. Um, we still got work for you. If you ever need work, we're gonna, we'll throw you a job. You'll be fine. And so there's so much support on that, and it was, it was awesome. Yeah. And, um, but I did it, and that's when I was able to put – I was literally had all this free time. Like, so every day I was like making YouTube videos. I was making more products to sell on Luxury Leaks to uh, support the channel. Um, and it's been, like, it's been like six months, I think. Six, full six, time now? Seven months full time, yeah. Yeah? And it's, it's been good, yeah. Because, like, I mean, when you started going back full time, I mean, there was a period where you were, like, not posting to YouTube at all. Like, it was, like, like very first half spaced of, out. First half of 2017. It was yeah. Like one, one video a month. It was terrible. It was and horrible, I was, yeah. And I don't think you're hilarious because you aren't business savvy at all because <laughs> he's just so damn creative and, like, wanting to teach and really loves teaching. Like, it's freaky you know what i mean and that's like uh, the thing yeah. but you sucked at i was like hey dude turn on your ads 
Oh, oh wait, yeah, there's yeah. no ads on here, dude. I think people are making a lot of money with Oh, my God. I forgot about that. And you're like, oh, I don't ads. know. He didn't turn on his ads. I've been telling him to turn on his ads for such a long time. And he's just like, no, nah, I don't know yet. I'm like, we're so used to watching them. I'm so used to every video I click on YouTube. I have to watch a fucking ad for five seconds, 15 seconds, 30 seconds. That was hilarious. I finally turned on my ads. And luckily, like, YouTube, like, piled up all that. I didn't know they piled it revenue up. So they were oh, like, really? they're actually. So yeah. you got back pay? I got some good we got back pay from that. Oh shit. I cuz I, I I wouldn't have expect that. So it it was a it was a good little beginning check. But um that's good segue. Do not rely on ads. Ads are not going to sustain you. Ads are on average like $1 per thousand views. Mm-hmm. Um do the math that's so was, terrible. Yeah, I mean like I get like 300 bucks per month on YouTube. Cuz <laughs> it's like uh 300,000 or 300,000 on average views per month of all my videos. Yeah, because right now I think I because I looked it up real quick before you got here and I saw it was six point eight million total views on your channel. Oh yeah, that's crazy. So I mean, if you're someone like Casey Neistat or uh, even Peter McKinnon, they're getting a little bit more. But not you, Logan Paul, no mo. <laughs> Logan, I mean, if you, he's let's probably you, still get, they're probably like we kicked him out of the program. They're like. Make money, man. One, Make one money. per thousand views. Once you start getting into the millions, it actually starts adding up. Great. Yeah. But like, in general, especially a lot of you guys that are just starting out, a lot. Of, I saw a lot of people complaining like, "Oh my gosh, YouTube changed the policy. I can't make money until I get a thousand subscribers." Don't even worry about that. Mm-hmm. Like, um, for the first year or so, just have fun. You know, like, um, keep doing your freelance jobs. Um, if you have a cool company, um. Say you got an internship with Nickelodeon or a cool music video company or whatever, you know, try that out. Um, but um, just having the back of your mind the entire time that your goal is YouTube, sustain a, a sustainable income via YouTube. Mm. And um, uh, I mean, yeah. it's really about pushing that boundary. I just had Anto the Boss, he's a YouTuber, he plays a lot of games, and his channel's. Uh, about to like hit a million, a million. I, I think yeah. I saw it. Yeah, it's about to hit a million, and he's been at it for like since high school or something. Just huh. playing games, saw that people were interested in it, kept playing. It. I've noticed that through a lot of people, even Justin O'Dee show. He wasn't like, even like doing it for money at first. No, no, like, yeah. even same with Justin. Justin was like, Yeah, I was just kind of like doing it because it was fun, and I like would make remixes of shout out to Justin, by the way. Yeah, shout out to Justin O'Dee show. Everyone he loves. Likes- Freaking puts out a video like every day or something. Literally, that's what I'm saying. Like, this dude took it to yeah. that level, but it's like. I don't know. I, it's that's got to be so hard to do. And I think a lot of the lessons that I learned from this podcast, talking to different creators, is that yeah. everything comes down to having a team. Right now, there's your interns Shout chilling out in the back behind Kirk. the cameras. Yeah. Um. So you have an intern, and you're starting to build up your team, which is sick because yeah. now that that's going to alleviate you from having to do a few extra steps in your day. You know what I mean? That yeah. can potentially set you up to focus on a bigger picture, which could be more videos every day or whatever it comes down to, you know? And I think yeah. that's something we all have to figure out, but that comes with um, eventually a price and it's tough when you just rely on ad revenue. So what you did strategically was build your store, which is another marketing thing that's funny to me because you call it luxury com, And then you sell like at this point, you hardly are selling light leaks. You're I know, selling it's, like it's my branding's all messed up. <laughs> like so in my mind, this is how I think about it. Luxury leaks doesn't have to reply does it have to uh, apply just to light leaks. It's just products in general. These are luxury leaks. Ooh. So th- thinking about these are these are things that uh you know, just they're leaking out. These are kind of exclusive products that you have the pleasure of knowing about. <laughs> So <laughs> fix your shit, I guess. You uh, I, it's all about I, branding. I did say it before, like where I was like, yo, you should make this like Olufemi Tutorials dot com or whatever it was. Yeah. But and we we're like, oh maybe and I then now that, yeah. looking at it looking at it before you came here, I was like, actually luxury leaks, if you don't think about light leaks, yeah. the name is really dope. And the you can it's, remember that. It's very yeah, you it's can't very remember easy Olufemi, remember. all you guys. It's hard to spell. Hey, hey, I remember you, you got you're that guy. Yeah, well, you have like five different names on the internet. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like your Instagram yeah. is one thing, your Facebook's this thing, your YouTube's this thing. Shout out to all the Nigerians. You know where it's at. <laughs> Y'all remember me. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you just, you've just you you've conquered that. And I love that, like, um, you know, for, I guess, could you give people an example of like what damage you could do with a product? Because you've tried to teach me the fact that you're like, yo, that video you did, because we did a tutorial on your channel. We've done, how many videos have we done on your channel? Three, one unlisted. Uh, uh, <laughs> three, 
three. <laughs> There's a <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Should we go into that? Nah. Okay. It's the the three that I did or the one that I did that I really liked was. The speed ramp one just blew up for some reason. Yeah, that was, that was the most great. recent one. That was like you guys two, really like that one. That one got like two hundred thousand views or something like that. Yeah, it's a good crazy. One. Yeah, two hundred thousand views times a dollar per. So. Yeah, how much? How much do I owe you? Yeah, you made some money. Uh, but when we were doing it, I was like, $20? "Yo, should we sell? This would be cool." See, the problem is we did it so last minute. Where I was like, "Maybe this would be cool to sell the project." thing or whatever the project file and uh-huh. damn two hundred thousand views i'm assuming some people may have wanted that yeah I is need that a good one or I, is that a bad one um oh you're talking to about sell, like, selling project, project file. files yeah yeah because project files where you started doing um, project files were good um that might have been a good one i don't know to give out yeah maybe it wasn't so complex or something it could be better or maybe if it came with like a preset but basically what we did was we sat down and I, I just like have gotten really good at uh, speed ramps, which is now like overdone. Everyone's doing them at this point because we had got 200,000 views, so now they know. Um, but it's, uh-huh. it is like an overly done, but people don't do the it right. The way you did it was Yeah, people different. don't do it right. I, I was like, okay, we're doing a speed ramping video. Okay, I've, I've done a speed ramping tutorial. Shout out to Ben. Ben was actually the first person to teach me how to speed ramp the right way. Oh, back, at, back when we were working back on, two years uh, ago, yeah. on the projects? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Crazy. That was a cool story. Uh, he was like, he literally told me how to do it over the phone when I was like assistant editing one of his, uh, I think it was the, the, Chris, the Chris Doc. Yeah. Or no, it was, this. okay. Yeah, so, tell the story. I don't remember. It's the story. It wasn't Chris Doc. It was the uh, the Chris Brown vid that you Royalty. shot with the Rory Snowy oh, cam or story. something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, never mind. Uh, it was Picture Me Rolling. Yeah. Go check it out. And so they were crazy. They were like trying to get like a vid out per day or something. And I was just there assisting. And I, he wasn't there. He needed me to like online a bunch of color. Oh God! Stuff. Which okay. Was hard. To summarize what happened, there was eight Chris Brown music videos that came out in 2016. 16, yeah. So in 2016, we did eight music videos. Um, Riveting produced all the videos. Chris directed all of them. Andrew Sandler produced all of them. Everyone was like. Basically, the first two happened, and then there was six more that happened a little while later. So hmm. all of them mm-hmm. told a story visually. If you play them one through eight, they tell some sort of story that Chris created. And so the last six, we had to shoot and edit those music videos. Like We'd be shooting on set, and then we'd be up all night editing with Chris at the office till like wee hours in the morning, yeah. back to set, back to editing, back to set. And it was like back and forth. And we were also uploading them to like mtv and shit to have them go but the, out the thing was it was like literally like you were editing the next video as you were shooting this video before it was all being done like overlapped over. and it, it was, was crazy yeah. but like literally one morning we stayed up all night long and finished exporting out a video and you were probably just going to school by the time this happened but we literally were uploading it to mtv with like 30 minutes to spare like edited it like that night before was when we edited the music video. It was yeah. insane. Something Crazy. like that. It was really ridiculous. So yeah. with that comes a lot of bullshit. And when you color red footage and you bring it back and we had edited speed ramps before, that's what Josh is talking about. It's like such a complicated... My mom, I know, listens to this podcast. So she's going to be like, what the fuck are they talking about? If the XML file doesn't quite translate or when you bring it back into Premiere from DaVinci. And so I had to add all the speed ramps back. I didn't know... I The, the way I speed ramped was I cut a clip... You know, added uh, speed and duration, 200%, 500%, cut it, brought it back to 100%, and then speed it up again. And Ben was like, yeah, that's not how you do it. So he taught me. That. <laughs> I mean, I feel like, you know, the, the way I don't know how I learned how to do it. I just like. So. Yeah, but. All you guys out, out there know what's up. Watch the tutorial. The tutorial yeah, teaches you. People good. still talk shit. They're like, this is an advance. I'm like, dude. Yo. If you see, just watch all the videos I get sent all the time from creators and they do what you're, you did. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? That's what they're doing. And they're doing it in like workout videos and they're doing it in all these, they're implying this transition and a lot of them aren't making simple choices. And it's just like something about, I don't know, whatever I figured out can make it so seamless. And I do it to time. Like in mm. music, I'll time those to music. I feel like that's so key. I don't know. I think that's why it hit so hard on your channel because shit, I don't really know. But I love that that, that worked. I loved it. That, that, uh People love all this stuff. Anytime you're featured <laughs> on my channel, it's like, bam. Tight. Everyone comes. Uh, 
but the reason why we're talking about all this is because the other one that you did was with um it was the I had shot a video for Chris Brown's album release show and then you oh, had me yeah. come on uh-huh. um which we did over Skype. I was in Houston. <laughs> he was in Houston, I'm in LA and we like both recorded ourselves talking on like whatever Facebook live or something and mm-hmm. uh and we just talked about like you know the thought process behind shooting it. What was the title of that video? Like shooting a video on the fly. Or uh, how to shoot a recap video. How to shoot a recap video. And so we talked about yeah. that on there. And that's when you were telling me like, oh, if you were to sell that project file from like what you did, that would kill. A lot of people would kill to have access to this. And that's yeah. What, I just always think, would I buy this? And if I would, I'm like, other people give it out let people let people have the access to it you know? so have you had a lot of success with project files um because you did that before you started doing like the sound packs and stuff right now i wouldn't say on the website uh yeah, like on the website yeah like yeah i think so like as far as like the uh like is it difficult well okay so i would say this if you just want to talk like I would say the this, amount of I success. I own a Tesla, man. I got a Tesla and a jet. All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs> no. But um, <laughs> not yet. But so so as far as just like if you guys are curious, like project files were great. Um, but once I started, like the sound pack was even better. Um effects pack. Kind of on the same level as the sound pack. You guys can check out all, all the products. But yeah, project files actually probably I had it on there the longest, but all these new things were a lot more popular compared to even oh, yeah? Project Files, yeah. I mean, I feel like right now at this point, it's like a given that a creator is selling a LUT pack or I just saw Peter McKinnon, which you should go change all the tags on your all your videos that have something to do with sound because he just like went and um, created his own sounds, but he did it oh. where he went to this dude's studio and collaborated with him, but made all the sounds with his mouth. Oh, Peter McKinnon? Yeah. So he, because I guess when he, Dang. if you watch good? his videos, he's always like, pop, pop making weird noises and shit yeah he went to the studio and like recorded those swish transitions and like pops and sounds like winds and i, I don't know so he made like a whole video about it okay. and now he's gonna sell genius and the dude's gonna just rake because if you do the math how much are a sound 60 bucks for a sound pack he's yeah doing, his are cheap i think no his lutz maybe are cheap i haven't done the lutz thing yet it's just like it's so it's so awesome how i mean guys think about like I'm talking to the audience. Yeah. Uh, thinking about like uh like ten years ago, like where would you get a whoosh transition? Like all these things that no we one take for granted them. now. Yeah, it's even true. It's like but even even when I was in college though. Yeah, how'd you do it in college? Because I'll tell I uh, you find, did you have any access to sound packs like I that? I do in college. I think I had to like find it off of YouTube, but it's just like I just feel like we have so much it, Every influencer has their own take on the wish transition as far as packs are selling. You could choose to buy it from me or from anyone. It's like, it's it's really awesome for you guys. It wasn't always this way. Digital products, they weren't always this. No, because I now, available. as we're talking about this, this is what I love about YouTube. And I and I I am constantly told to do YouTube more often, which is my goal now with Black and No Cream channel and to like make more content for this shit. Yeah. But you tell me about this all the time. Marcus at EA is telling me to get on YouTube all the time. John at EA is telling me to do it all. Everyone's like, dude, do YouTube. Trust me. Like, get on here. Yeah. And I see the benefit of a lot of this. And that's kind of like why I started Black Window Cream in the first place was because obviously I was just getting messages all the time from people that were trying to learn how to do shit. Oh, I saw you at school. What cute. What lens did you use? You mean like financial benefit? No, no, no. Not financial benefit. Okay. This is where I feel like we're the same because you were doing YouTube and not turning on your ad revenue. Not yeah. knowing you could make money, you were making a grade content for the sake of making a grade content because you knew it was like gonna help people. We should talk about finances and like people are always like afraid to talk about money, but no, like, yeah, keep but, going what but you're that, what I was gonna yeah. finish with that is that I think in the same sense, if we go back ten years, yeah, I now or whenever the fuck I was in college, not ten years ago, but like even ten years ago, I remember maybe I was in high school or something and or whatever and. Hmm. My first, I don't know. However long ago Final Cut 7 was out. Oh, yeah. I had Final Cut 7, and I got the DVDs from a teacher, and I was, like, blown away. She was like, you can use these and just tell me what you think, because that's what I'm supposed to. She had, like, some solid-ass deal with Apple where they were, like, giving her to test out the product. Yeah. So she had all the DVDs. So I installed all the shit on my computer, and I just didn't touch it for, like, another six months because I was terrified. She probably, she probably, like, ripped them off. No, it was no, the whole okay. box. It was the full oh, suite. Okay. They, okay. They, it was said, like, teacher, I did, like, teachers, you should 
<laughs> should have done this back when you were a teacher. Because they would send teachers this and ask for like personal reviews on like the software and if they would use it. Dang, okay. Just before editing was like I got okay. It was you know just I, I got my copy illegally, but Oh, so did yeah. I after that. Anytime yeah. anything else came out after that, I was like all Adobe right. free shit. Um it's the past. I was I was broke, dog. Uh good times. Yeah. But anyway, having that I had no idea how to use Final Cut. I was yeah. terrified. I, I opened the software, I saw the interface, and I shut it down, and then I literally didn't open it for another six months. Hmm. And I ended up buying a Final Cut 7 book that was fucking YouTube in a book where I would like sit there, and it would be like, this is what this is, this is what a bin is, this is what a sequence is. And I was like taking notes in this book. I remember taking a trip, a family trip down to Florida, and I was sitting on the balcony, and like we were by the beach, and I was like, this is sick. And I'm just sitting there being a fucking nerd, reading this Final Cut 7 book, like taking notes, and you uh-huh. would like work around with it. Like they gave you stuff. That is what this is now. That's why I still think yeah. like you selling project files makes too much sense because there's kids that are stuck and have no idea what it actually looks like. You can talk about it all day. You can go and go through it real quick in a tutorial. But yeah. to like see that is so cool to me, and that's why it makes sense that it still works today. But yeah, I, it was a struggle back then. I mean, in college, that I remember the books, CDs, b- Borders, Barnes sound packs were on CDs, dog. And Ooh, I didn't even, you. and it, I didn't care because I, that didn't make sense to me. And uh-huh. I'm in college learning about filmmaking, uh-huh. and they're not telling me why sound effects help. <laughs> you know ah, what I mean? They don't teach you anything in school. They don't teach you speed ramps in school. They don't teach I you mean, how you to edit a music taught video. The kids speed I did. You taught light leaks. I did. You talking about make back. custom light leaks? That's crazy. Yo, yeah, but uh, finances. Let's go into it. Yeah, how much you make? Tell us. <laughs> oh snap! <laughs> I'm joking. No, but I mean like. No, but let's talk. Okay, I, yeah. I want to talk about this. So. People are afraid about talking about finances. And um, I think I'd start out by just saying that if you are a YouTuber, we are saying, and I think it's true to say that you should not go into YouTube to make money. Mm. You're not going to make great content because your content's always going to be skewed as far as, well, you know, oh, maybe I can make a series so that I can sell it. Um, and you're going to actually start coming up with topics that are kind of more generic. Like, of course, if I were to put out a, a transition video right now, it would probably get 100,000 views. Right. Um, but I love, I love transitions, but I don't always want to talk about transitions. I want to talk about niche stuff that I know a certain niche market will love. Maybe just like 8,000, 10,000 people out of, you know, all my subscribers will, will appreciate. And if I were to monetize that, which maybe I would, I wouldn't make as much money, but I want to be able to like keep my channel interesting. Um, so you can't think about money, um, uh, as the main goal, but you got to always realize that money is a necessity in the back end, mm. in the background. Um, so realize that say you're a tutorials channel or you're a, just any kind of content channel, you are doing a lot of stuff for free. I'm talking to all you guys out there that are content creators. You're doing a lot of stuff for free. Um, if you want to continue doing stuff for free and continue kind of living out your passion, creating videos that you enjoy doing, whether and you know teaching people how to make those videos as well if you want, you got to realize that any money that you make via digital products or selling even selling series, I guess, it's not something to be ashamed of. It's 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 basically your subscribers telling you that I appreciate what you're doing and I realize that you got to pay your bills, so I'm going to support you with as much as I can. Um, and I benefit like the benefit that they get from the content that you provide. Like, yeah, we, right before we started this, we, I'm just live streaming right now from my Instagram, from the black and the cream Instagram. I've never done that before during a podcast. That's weird to me. Nice. I don't know if it's still going. Is it still going? Oh shit. My phone must've died. Oh. Anyways, we we're live streaming before we started. I was like telling them, Oh, Josh is here. Yada, yada. And someone was like, Oh my God, I just watched a video of his today and like learned something in premiere today. Which is awesome. Right before it, like. Just he's here. Like that's what that's how beneficial this is. And I even remember being somewhere in Europe, I wanna say, or Germany or something when I was on that tour with Q and I think I had to help SZA like help edit some clip for SZA and they needed something specific. I don't know what the hell it was how to do it. Hmm. And like I went on YouTube real quick and I searched and you're like the top video teacher you know how to do it. Hey. I'm like, oh sick. Boom. Hey. So I'm learning from you how to do something for Levels. a superstar now. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> like that's crazy from like that's, dope though, yeah. that's how beneficial that is. So yeah, it's totally I, I don't feel I feel the same way about like having these discussions with finance as far as like hmm. 
when should you ask for money or when should you, you know, provide things that cost money and why do they cost this much? Like even when they started Black Widow Cream, it was like, fuck, do I sell shirts? And like, I don't want it to. And people, like- people didn't realize because I've been there since the start of Black Widow Cream. Yeah. Seeing you just killing it this whole time. It's, this is kind of, you put so much money into this. <laughs> like, like, it's funny. Like, I'm just always in the background seeing, seeing you, how you manage stuff and stuff. And it's like, if people knew how much money as far as not only finances, but time, it's like, yeah, they're like, it, it's, it's something that people don't realize. All you guys that are content creators may realize it, but especially when you start getting to the point, like back, back it's getting big, the group. Yeah, yeah, it's getting big. Yeah, I think finances is definitely, financing things is definitely a great, just me just consulting you. Like, like go for it. Yo, like, it's something that I think is a very acceptable thing to do as far as starting like a Patreon account. Um, yeah, you just, because there comes a point discussion. where you just can't, you can't continue doing stuff for free. <laughs> well, and I think people could, would expect that you can, and those are going to be your naysayers. And then there's people that are going to understand that that's impossible and that there's a reality that we live in where fucking yeah. things cost money. And so, but I looked at it like this, like when okay. we talk about, because we just had this discussion in the group the other day about Patreon. And I'm like, hey, who knows what this website is? I think this could be a cool possibility for us because I'm going to look for sponsors for this group. I'm going to look for things that could help fund it. That was the goal all along. Mm. I would love for it to be out of the pockets of a company that is doing fine and will benefit from me talking about them. But I also mm. don't want to be overbearing and like annoy people. So oh, okay. I'm only going to ever... Um, you know, take a check from someone that makes sense for the group. Like if you're yeah. talking about cameras or, or whatever, and I think it's an actual real product that could benefit the group. Cool. I'll let, we'll make a deal. Yeah. But I don't know. Maybe that's why we haven't, I haven't made a deal yet. Cause I don't want to take on some bullshit company. Someone get, tried to give me headphones to talk about them for two months. And I'm like, I don't fucking care about your headphones. I got AirPods dog. <laughs> like I'll talk about my AirPods for free because I fuck with Apple. But, but yeah. like, in the group, I had that discussion. I was like, "Do you guys? What do you guys think about this?" Because I never want to make anyone feel like it's going. Like I want money. Like I deserve you really money. Really good at that, yeah. You know what I mean? I don't want that because that's not the case. Like I've spent a shit ton of money on yeah. black and cream, and it's just been the idea of like this will pay off eventually, like through sponsors or whatever. But now I look at Patreon in a sense, and I think even for you to do it, I don't, it just feels organic to me in a way where you yeah. have those creators that understand what goes on and what benefit they get out of this. And mm-hmm. I know I created a group that is helping a lot of people. Like people are meeting people and becoming friends through this. They're sharing. Yeah, their, they're getting it's feed, awesome. I, I love it. Yeah. It's awesome. Like the fact that you're in there, people like you, Justin O'D show, like Chris Brown's photographer, Jake, he's in there. Like all these people are in this group Yeah. and I see them, see you every once in a while. And they're like, Oh shit, Josh in the group. What the fuck? I love your videos. And they freak out. And yeah. it's like, the fact that you can be side by side or ask a question and have a professional, quote unquote, answer it is so cool. And we're not char- like there's it doesn't like, cost anything. They're like I don't even know like any other, maybe it's just me like in, like group like that. Like I have no idea. Yeah. I don't know, and I think it now that I've started studying Patreon more, it, I think the process would have been get famous for something, start a Patreon then start a private group that if everyone pays money for the Patreon can get access into this private group and you can all have a discussion. It's like this one-on-one thing where you have to pay money for it. So gotcha. for me, there's no that doesn't exist and I don't want Patreon to become something that's like, um, it pulls away from the group at all. It'd have to be like monetary, like, hey, if you give like $5, I'll give you 5% off merch or some shit. You know what I mean? Like it has to yeah. be something in that sense. But it's an interesting topic because I definitely yeah. felt weird about the idea that like, yo... I don't, it's not that I need money. Like I'm cool and I work my ass off outside of this parallel to this to be able to like afford my life. Um, It's more or less the idea that so much more you could do. Funding would help propel the group to like a whole nother level and funding would help you propel your thing to a whole nother level because imagine if you could, imagine if someone invested a million dollars into you right now for just for one year. What are you going to do with a million dollars? Cool. Editors on deck. Boom. Cool. Shooters on deck. Cool. Boom. A new microphone. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, you got that same little microphone. I could could afford a lab mic. Yeah, a lab mic or something. But, like, these are the things that you could do with a budget. So it's not that, hey, guys, like, I really want to get a a $10,000 a month house in the hills or whatever. That's not what my goal is. My goal is that I need, like, to buy better gear. And I would love to, I shoot, I have four, I bought three 4K cameras. 
for the podcast, Just right? Looking at those, yeah. And they're cool. Yeah. They're like 900 bucks each. Buy three of these, and I shot yeah. in 4K, and the, the each card takes up like 100 gigs per interview. So hmm. I have 300 gigs per interview. Then I have to send that to, to, to my intern, Dave, in Texas, which I can't. Like, I can't send him 300 gigs because his internet's too fucking slow. Right. And if I was in, a, like, a WeWork office, my internet's too slow to upload. So it's just not feasible. So I had to downgrade back to 1080. So I shoot all these in HD again. Okay. So I can't even do that. But with a budget, I could say, oh, cool. I'll just overnight a drive to him. He'll get that. Send it back. Boom, boom, boom. That's just a fee that we have to pay in order to have quality or whatever and lights and all this stuff. So it's right. like I think about that all the time. And I feel like at this point, us as creators who provide something, and I wouldn't say... Ben Rovers world needs money and because he provides great photo- photography and video stuff on his Instagram, that doesn't make sense for me. Hmm. Black Widow Cream is its own thing. It's a world that people live in and they gain insight. I think that's totally fair for people to want to chip in to make that thing run at full speed. Yeah, Your channel is the exact same thing as a Black Widow. I, I wouldn't say like, oh, I want to support. It's a little bit different. It. A little bit, yeah. But like, in a sense, like yeah. your channel provides so much power and amazing content and insight that it's fair for you to say... Hey, this is here if, if anyone wants to help. <laughs> or yeah. hey, sponsor, pay me a ton of money because I deserve it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. not not I deserve it in a sense, but like my content deserves it. The content sponsorship is actually interesting as far as for as far as I go, as far as YouTube channels. What's up? Um talk about it. I think cause like since the channel's been growing, I've been getting a lot of like sponsors wanting to uh I I've just been getting a lot of free stuff, people sending me stuff. Yeah. And I need to be careful. But like at first, I was excited. I was like, dang, okay, some free products, some free, like, current products, too. And I was realizing, like, they're not just giving me products for free. They want to, obviously, I want to have access to my my folks. And so, um, the people that follow me, and I'm like, these products are not necessarily bad, but are they cool enough that I want to make a whole video and tutorial and hype them up? I just don't feel like... I'm all right with that. So it is, it's almost like whenever you get to a point when your channel's big enough and you get like a free insert product here, realize that all, all you have to do is get one of your subscribers, to, two of your subscribers to buy that product for them to already make back what they just got from giving it to you. Right. So obviously if you make a video and you get like 100,000 views on that video, then you kind of just got gypped, you know? <laughs> Unless the product's really, really good and you would have made the video anyway. But it's it kind of a random thing. No, All the guys that have channels. That's such a good Like, just know, so maybe the product's worth it and just make the video anyway. But just know, don't get too excited because know that they, they have a plan, you know, as far as... But I think there's ways that you could deal with it too in a sense okay. where you could say, cool, thanks for the shit. I, or when they say, hey, can we... Sorry, I just hit my mic. Hey, yeah. um, can we send you these this i don't know ronin or send you a stabilizer or whatever some chinese company that's just built this thing and they want press yeah yo i won't i'm not guaranteeing that i'll talk about it in my channel but Mm -hmm. i can talk about it on my instagram stories or you know Mm -hmm. what i mean in a sense like that where you could do a fair trade where it's cool because then you have something and you can use that as a tool for whatever you want and if you end up becoming obsessed with it like then you can hit them back and be like hey i would love i do like your product and now maybe we could crack a deal. You know what I mean? Like maybe yeah. I'll talk about this in one video if you can help me pay my rent for the next three months because then I can just focus on that video and make it really ill plus five. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's like so many variations of this, but it's really interesting because you don't have a manager, do you? Yeah. Uh, Are you no, like working on one? Not officially, no. Really? But you think you might get one? My girlfriend's my manager. Ooh. Yeah. She lives yeah. in Australia, everybody. He, that's why he's moving to Australia very soon. That's an interesting. Let's talk about that real quick. So you you guys met like a year ago. Uh, oh, we're going to get in trouble. <laughs> no, you're not supposed to talk about it. Well, let's just talk uh, about moving. Like you're, the fact I, that... I, I, am, uh, I am moving. I'm moving to Australia. Um, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to be living in both LA and Australia. Mm. Um, it's going to be great. I, I'm going to have a... Yeah, I have a year there currently as far as my visa goes, and uh, it's going to be great. I'm going to have a lot of friends over there now. Um, I even have subscribers over there I talk to, kind of. That's like crazy. It's crazy. It's, it's actually pretty ridiculous, yeah. And so... Um, How many times have you gone? I've gone two times. Two times? Yeah, two times. Because you went before I went, and I remember you... It was funny because uh, yeah. you told me about how crazy... Uh, 
you had to make a video and then you were like, it was really interesting with the culture because you told me that you thought that the, um, the, 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 what the fuck, the street walking signs, you know what I mean? The crosswalk. Oh yeah. So I was just like, I, 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 I didn't travel much, honestly, before I went to Australia, like two year, year and a half ago at this point. And so I, I this is my first time really shooting in depth in a, in another country. Um, I think before that, I just like, I'd done a shoot in like Mexico. Well, does it really count? And so <laughs> I was, I was, it was just surreal. I was just like, okay, I'm in a foreign country. You know, this, right. is, this is cool. I'm, I'm shooting. I'm like all these things that are like strangely familiar, but weirdly different at the same time. Um, and so it, that, that was just to say that I did this tutorial about how you can have a great time shooting for other people in foreign countries, but realize that your that what is different to you is they're familiar. So I remember I spent all this time like shooting the street sign as part of this B-roll for this lifestyle video. And I was like, okay, they're going to think this is the most boring footage in the world. And that, as opposed to me who is like, cool. Oh, instead of having the walk signal, they have like, it's like something else. And I, yeah, you told me that and you're like, I was like, oh, that is weird. And then I got to Australia and I remember like sitting there, but it, I think they're, when the when it's your turn to walk, it just sits there and beeps really loud, so you don't even have to think anymore. You just know that it's okay for you to walk across the street sign yeah. or walk across the street. And I thought it was dope, and also filmed the thing. Yeah. <laughs> I did shoot. It. I'm pretty sure it's in one of uh, the unreleased schoolboy Q video, like that never came out. I'm pretty sure that there's a, a Australian street sign in that. That's shit. dope. Shout out to all the Australians yeah. out there. But um, so yeah. you guys shot you shot all that stuff, and then decided to move over there, and then um, so yeah. you'll be like creating content in Australia are you going to will that different differentiate your content that you're going to create based on like hey guys I'm in Australia so here's a fucking kangaroo uh let's it's, play with speed ramps <laughs> 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 let's make no it it's going to be really dope fast. it's going to be dope so like um my content is going to change a little bit cuz I'm in another country um what I love is all uh, Living in LA is great. It's one of the best cities in the world. The best city in the world, mm. in my opinion. Um, Australia is just a cool place to shoot because you don't have to worry about permits. You don't have to worry about, like, people don't mind being shot. They, If you have a camera, it's like, oh, this is cool. You know, a film guy, you know, an American too. That's dope. Right. And so, um, like, I, I just, I had, had no trouble filming people. I could go film right in the city with my huge, you know, Ronin film anywhere you know which can never happen in la or New yeah York. like it wouldn't work here no you get shut down really quick just the sites are really cool like you have this this i don't know you see like pine trees on the beach which i, I didn't see it's just it's it's cool it's just different well you right now you're you're doing a series um what's the name of this current series with like matt alonzo and um uh my co and my co so two different things there was a series called music videos one-on-one 101 uh, it was like seven videos with director Maiko, dope director. You should check it out, music video director. Um, and then me and Matt have just been friends for a while. So it seems like every other week or every week. We Matt Alonzo is also an ill uh, director. Matt Alonzo, yeah. Check him out. You guys, a lot of you guys probably already know about him. Yeah. Um, really dope music video director. We just shoot stuff whenever we have free time. It's not really even an organized series. Yeah. But you did that with... Okay, so then let's say that the My Co thing is a, more of an organized series. Seven episodes? It's like seven videos, yeah. They're like ten, eight minutes long? No, like two They're, three that minutes. that short? Yeah. I thought I watched one the other day and I thought it was long. Anytime I'm like, I have free time, I literally go and just to like get you views. I'll go watch your oh, channel. Oh, man. And I watch all the... Anytime there's an ad, I'm Great like, friend. play that thing for 15 seconds. I ain't gonna skip this oh, ad. Man. I do that for anyone that is on YouTube that I support. I'm like, all right, Aww. cool. Um, but... I watched yeah. it. I swear it was long. I thought it was longer than that. One was like five minutes. The first the one? one? Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. yeah. Um, but yeah, you're doing that series. Could you see yourself doing that with Australian artists too? Uh, yeah. You know yeah, for sure. Because that'd be kind of interesting to hear yeah. like an uh, Australian hear director or something and break down. But I mean, look at what you were just talking about. It's so super interesting that you can just pull up a camera and shoot in Australia. What are the issues that you deal with as a director over in Australia? What are the... That... That would be interesting to talk about. That's what I'm saying, man. I don't like, know. freaking. I remember like, <laughs> like charging my camera. Didn't realize that um, the you know all the cords, are, all the AC outlets are different. Realizing that I planned out my entire shot, my entire shoot with a certain amount of daylight. But going to Australia, it's like winter over there, so I have like half the amount of daylight hours. Stuff like that, you kind of just need to 
that's you learn from right? yeah it's really cool it's interesting um yeah but anyway back to i guess when you come back to the monetary value of having a YouTube channel, yeah. what are some of the things that, you, that you're that you setting in place for yourself to maintain success? And also talk about the fact that um, when you were off the grid, like you were building up your YouTube channel, then you went off the grid for a little bit because you were working with Ironwell so much. So mm-hmm. you didn't have time to really produce as much content. And at the time, I want to say you were sitting at like 85,000 subscribers, right? Like was it mm-hmm. around that one? Because I remember watching you and I was like, dude, you are so close to 100K. That's great. Once you hit 100K, yeah. guess what? 200K and then, you know what I mean? Like that's just going to build up. And right. then I, I feel like as soon as you said, all right, cool, I'm back at it. Like that 100K came in no time. It's so hard. I had like these milestones. I remember like last August of 2016, I was at 20,000. And then I hit 100K six months ago which was like in the summer. So tw- summer of 2017 is when I hit 100K. I was literally with you. We went to Starbucks, remember? Oh, you were? Yeah, you came by the house and you just hit 100K earlier in the day and then we were at Starbucks and I think I got you some like something because you hit 100K, I don't know. I, you, wait, when did I... Your girl was there, me, Lauren, I Oh, think. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's when I met her for the first time. That's so right, yeah, like, Sunset, yeah. Yeah, right by your old place. Yeah. Little 100K party real quick. Dope, yes. I remember uh, that. And so, um, but yeah, you had I forgot when I was at 85. It was like spring or something. something. But I just remember you being so close and, be, and watching you just not create because you were so busy. I'm like, dude, you had... I know. I just keep seeing other people that are just creating such a good career for themselves off of this and building such a fan base where... Yeah. Once you have, like, imagine in three years from now, you blow past a Peter McKinnon, you blow past a whoever, name anyone. Yeah. You know I mean, your channel becomes so primary to everyone that needs help that you become that dude where when you decide, oh, cool, maybe YouTube starts to die out at that same time. You, Josh has 10 million followers, but that means mm-hmm. really nothing over here because of Vero or whatever that <laughs> dumbass app that just came out, everyone's on that now. I know it, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So at that point, what you could do and in that position is provide your create production companies based off of the networking and all the things that you've done. You could start building companies based off of your name at that point because you've mm. built clout. You know what I mean? Like your yeah. clout is so big. So like in three years, you know, or five years, like what is your what is the plan for for yourself? I mean, mm. Australia is random over the last like whatever year and a half you came up with that idea. Yeah. But like what are your future plans for your mm. channel and everything? Future plans for the channel. Um, or you, just in general. Like, what, for me? You know what I mean? I, that's a big question. So as far as the channel goes, I feel like I'm always going to love to teach. I'm always going to love to teach, and I'm always going to love putting out free content. Mm-hmm. Um, that's just something I've always done. Um, uh, so I never see myself not making YouTube videos for that channel, the Olafemi Tutorials channel. Um, one thing I do want to do though, in addition to that, is I want to grow luxuryleaks.com. In what way? Um, uh, just scale. I want to scale it. Like, um, there's just, uh, there's just so much more I could do with that, mm. that website as far as delivering quality products to a kind of a niche market. I say niche market. There's so many kind of tutorial channels now that are kind of doing the stuff that I feel like I was doing, like kind of at the beginning as far as. Oh, I want to know how to edit a music video, a hip hop music video with dub transitions. That's something that like it wasn't something people were doing like yeah, two years ago. It. And so um like all the stuff on luxuryleaks.com very much catered to that, you know. Um it, 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 there's so much more I could expand as far as kind of offering stuff for that niche as far as fast pace right. editing short form project editing, and like yeah. what's what's like the what's one thing that could help you get there get to that point you know is it i think it, in my mind it's like okay cool the <clears throat> it's obvious like the support is so hmm. important from your fan base at this point because you're yeah. in this situation right now where yes you do want to expand and that is so crucial to helping that happen you know what i mean i think that's yeah. like an important thing for any of your fans that are listening to this to understand it's like yeah yeah it's five dollars you know what i mean but that five dollars goes a long way because that could pay yeah. for someone's lunch you know, an intern's lunch one day or something you know what i mean like yeah those are the things i think that are very important but i think it would be if you grow that that website is just gonna get so massive and yeah. and the collaboration that's what like you're already doing collaboration's massive i that that that's the one that you hit it right on the nail like 
collaboration is the path to scaling with the channel and that website. Mm. Because I realized that, you know, I would always be creating videos, tutorials, like I, I still do. And there's a, there's a limit to what I know, you know. And if I go do a tutorial with Matt Alonzo, who's been doing music video, editing, directing, and producing for like 10, 12 years, it's like it's ridiculous how much knowledge you get. And that's not something that I could have given. Right. So it's like when I go to you and you do your tutorial on speed ramping, it's not something I knew how to do. Mm. Like, It's like you're the mediator or you're, you're yeah. the distributor. Because that's what's also cool is like... I'm sure you guys <clears throat> appreciate that too, like... Yeah, yeah. You're you're in a in a way where, um, you know we we come to you expecting tr like you're a trusted brand. You know what I mean? Yeah. Your trusted channel is mediator, a trusted like mediator, and so we believe that you will only provide things that are going to give us the confidence to create better. And so with that is that's the trust factor. So you've mm -hmm. built that with your following, and I think you'll continue to build that. And that's what makes it sick because at this point it's like you could have technically tried to go ahead and create all the sounds that you were in your sound pack. You could have. You could have tried to go learn how to do that shit. Yeah. But you saved thousands of hours by teaming up with someone and splitting costs or whatever that, you know, you yeah. create a deal with them. Yeah. And now you're just, a, you're the best buy. You're the best buy taking the RCD and putting it in the hands of the people that want And I know that most. sound pack's sick. There's, that's, we could talk about this specializations another really cool topic which we won't get into but basically we should be a jack of all trades but realize that people specialize on things for a reason because they have a passion for it and you should let be able to delegate stuff for the benefit of everyone mm. everyone benefited by the fact that i collabed with ava music as opposed to created my own sound pack right you know i'm not a music producer right yeah. and, and you got high quality sounds versus like some mediocre record yeah sound. i made this with my mouth guys <clears throat> hey i mean that uh -huh. might they might turn out good if you're talking oh i wasn't that, even I was, shots. That, that was not a shot <laughs> i totally forgot <laughs> no i love i love McKinnon. <laughs> Uh, uh, that was not shy. No, I know what you're saying though. Like, I mean, it could have been or hey. in the field with like a random road mic, and you're just trying to pick up like a car passing by, versus right. actually going through it. Right. It's just a difference, and and I think that that's a good investment for you to start making. And and same with Justin Od Show and all these people that are creating yeah. valuable packs. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that stuff goes a long way. You never know. So, yeah, where do you see it going? I, I, you know, you're gonna grow that channel. I just don't want to miss anything. We've only talked for an hour, so I felt like we could usually go for longer, but I didn't even start it like your childhood in this interview. I just kind of went into college. Back when I was a kid. Teaching. I uh, was a man of the street. Oh, yeah? I had a rough childhood. Uh, Did you? You guys don't even know. <laughs> I've come so far. I grew up next to Peter McKinnon. <laughs> That's why I take shots at him. <laughs> the Black and <laughs> Creek podcast. <laughs> uh... Uh, in yeah, your anyway, yeah. um in your plans for the future, do you see um more collaborations with Black with No Cream? Yes. Black with No Cream is my there's just so much that we both can do together as far as like um Black with No Cream, you're talking about just being like a mediator. That's who you are. Oh my oh, gosh. Yeah. Like you of course you have all your knowledge, which is evident, but we already kind of talked about this, touched on this at the beginning. I can go into Black With No Cream, and I can regularly talk to um, Justin Odishu. I can talk to Max Novak, his name? Yeah, Max. Max. Um, all these random people uh, that I actually, you know, I didn't even know. You just know everyone. And so I'm like, oh, this is cool. This is really awesome. I'm like learning a lot of stuff. Then you have all these people that are, you know, just kind of, rising up mm -hmm. themselves but they're really talented maybe a lot of people don't know about them but they're crazy talented yeah and so um if i have work if i have like say um i'm just not interested in like doing like a crazy vfx project but there's a vfx person that loves lyric videos i don't know why any of you guys do um I, you know, like, I, have, I have a bro uh, uh, you know back in the cream that can they could do that and it's like i just feel like we're at uh, we me and kirk were talking about this earlier as video editors, at least for me, it can be very lonely. For sure. <laughs> like, I'm literally spending hours by myself every day. And so now I got Kirk, which is great. But um, <laughs> Black and the Cream is kind of like a, a cool outlet as far as you can share your work. You can get positive you know, feedback and, or negative feedback. But 
you know, you, you just feel like you, there's people that understand you. And, um, yeah, it, it's, it's great. It's but a I great. think that's the one reason why it's working is the, – the reason why it's working is because, A, from choosing to do it on Facebook, obviously I could do it somewhere else, like a forum or something, but it eliminates trolls in a way where mm. – Okay. People take Facebook so fucking serious that they think that this is like real life. So mm. they aren't going to talk shit because this could happen. Or if they post a bad picture, it could come up later. Like it's such a real, Cause it's like being there in real life. You're like, accountable because your picture's in there. And you're attached. You're, all your history is there. You've been on it for so long. So at this point, I look at it like, all right, cool. People can come in here and give negative feedback or give mm. feedback. It'd be constructive criticism. Like I don't yeah. think I've seen someone really talk shit yet. There's been like... No, no one's so. really yeah. talked shit yet. It's just a really a lot of nice people. Huh? One person got like kind of fucked over on. Um, they sold like a lens through. Yeah. They met someone and sold the lens and didn't get like all the money and promoted or talked about it, and everyone yeah, started everyone firing back. <laughs> everyone started like camaraderie is crazy in Black and Oak. That's what's dope. Yeah. Is that they ripped that kid apart, but that kid also I think I don't know if he's working on still getting the money or something happened. Who knows what his situation was, but yeah, that I then see a black window cream member be like, Hey, yo, I'm cool with it. If everyone else is cool with it to like pull in like 20 bucks each and yeah. send it to the kid that lost his money. It's power in numbers. It's crazy. It's crazy. Like, yeah, but yeah, I, um, I, I, I do love that part about it. I don't even black know. Black cream is going to go get way bigger. And the fact that all of us are in here right now at the beginning means something. We're going to, we're going to have those historical roots that we can always look back on and like kind of be happy about, you know? Oh, that's what you were talking about was being lonely. It's like, I think that that's such a key element to all of this is because yeah. I can get on here at four in the morning if I'm editing yeah, something. Yeah, four in the morning. And like, there's a kid in another part of the world that's awake. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, you can crack like a joke that like no one in your family or in, in your friends group gets and you're like... Yeah. I love that. I love get, hearing get, people say that shit because I don't even yeah. think about that when I'm thinking about the group anymore. Like, yeah. Um, anyway, let's as we talk about Black on a Cream, I did post in here that you were going to be on this shit um, literally within an hour. So I don't know how many people talked about. Uh, I, I let them ask you questions. Right, right. I saw um, some of them. So let me see. <clears throat> let me pull that up real quick. I'm sorry because I lost it. One um, question I thought was cool was, uh, oh, was uh, oh, did did I ever learn anything from my students? Someone asked that? Yes, yeah, because I was a teacher for three years. So one thing that I learned, it was funny. Um, I actually learned, not only from my students, it was actually everyone. So I had this brilliant idea as far as tutorials. I just come up with tutorials in my mind, and I just make them real quick. And I had no idea that um, you could use alt to copy um, clips. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, I didn't know. It was like, it's like, I didn't know that was a thing. Um, it happens. No, like, I was like, so I was like, this is going to be dope. I just learned this thing. Uh, one of my students told me about it. I was like, this is your genius, man. And so I made a whole tutorial on it, put it on my YouTube channel, and like, you guys don't even know. But, 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 like, how did you not know that? Josh and Abakre <laughs> didn't know alt, that you could use alt to copy clips. Like, I, could, I do that in Photoshop. So first I was like taking it back, like, oh, dang. But then I just, it was like, okay, okay. Um, I don't know if I regret doing this because I legitimately didn't know. So I'm sure there are some people that yeah that benefited from it. Yeah, I'm sure. But like, happened. but that was that was funny. That was like my embarrassing moment. That's hilarious. Was that was put from on blast. Uh, that was from Nico's Pasha list. That's my favorite part now that this kid pointed this out that I'm terrible at saying people's last names. Nico. Now I'm just going to keep botching everyone's names on purpose. Um, not on purpose, but you get the idea. Ryan Wilk yeah. says, uh, yes. Ryan so stoked for this question for Josh. Do you have clients looking for creatives who are a jack of all trades, i.e., great cinematographer, editor, knows how to grade, etc., or are people still wanting specialists? Do you see the trend shifting in the future? And do you think, as developing, this is a long question, mm -hmm. and uh, do you think, as developing creators, we should focus in one area or be good at everything? This is what I say. You should be. A jack of all trades you should be proficient in everything, mm -hmm. but you should specialize in what you're passionate about. For sure, you should never be afraid to delegate um, duties. So um, know everything. Know how to do VFX. Know how to direct. Know how to DP. Know how to edit. Um, know sound design. But specialize in what you actually like to do. Maybe you're just you really love shooting. You love DP and know everything so that you know how to delegate and how to direct. 
um, effectively, but don't be afraid to delegate. Yeah, for you know? sure. Um, if you have a music video where you're just a one man band, it's not going to turn out as good as, as, you know, compared to if you have a team of people that all specialize. Hey, speak for yourself. Huh? Speak for yourself, dude. Mine might come out. Oh, yeah, awesome. I have seen you do some crazy <laughs> one man band no, I'm stuff. Kidding. But, uh, no, yeah. I agree because even when I used to make music and we would record all the time, I was trying to learn like how to use Pro Tools or how to use Logic for the sake of just being able to communicate to the person that was actually good at that. Yeah. Oh, what if we did this and this? Like I could use I knew plugin names and stuff like that, but yeah. I saw other creators that were in there not knowing that shit. And it was harder for them to just talk to someone. So being able to know everything helps you speak the language that they need to hear from you know, to give a real good direction you know I like yeah that. that makes sense yeah um alexander andrew two first first and last names that's interesting um says answer yes please as far as doing the live stream but uh they say if you if you in australia josh when you gonna be in perth let's connect <laughs> yo shout out to perth perth is dope those of you guys that don't know no. i've never been to perth perth is literally on the other side of the world Australia is this really incredible country where everyone lives on the East Coast, Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne, mm-hmm. all over cities. And then you have Perth on the other side of the world, literally smack dab across the country with nothing around it. It has like, I think, one million, two million people. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. Dude, we flew there. Um, we oh, did yeah. like the whole run on the east side of Australia. The east side is where like Sydney and shit's at, right? Right. Uh-huh. So we finished all of that. Our last show was in Perth. We flew across the country to go to Perth, then finished that show, flew all the way back to Sydney. Uh, no, to New Zealand. Uh-huh. I think we flew to New Zealand, then flew to LA, which was like the <laughs> longest flight. It was like 18, That's 19 crazy, hours. Crazy, dude. That's it was terrible. But crazy. he also wanted to know do you Love see Perth, Trent- though. Great job. Um, wait, Great city. Wait. How long usually do your edits take you? Basically, is what he's asking. I'm a slow editor, and I've realized that over the years. Um, I'm slower than you'd expect. Um, but I think that my edits look good at the end. How long does it take you to craft like a... a like a music video edit? No, just a, no, I would say like more for your channel. Oh, uh, like a tutorial edit. Um, yeah. I could knock that out in like a... <laughs> Ah, it depends. It really depends. Like, I probably, as far as turnaround time, I usually spend a day to shoot and a day to edit. Mm-hmm. Maybe I shoot like a few videos, but it's like I can't spend, I'm not spending the entire day. It's like I'm busy, I'm driving. Just to get to those where, yeah. like places. So at the end, so at the end of two days, I usually have one video mm-hmm. if I'm doing stuff right. Um, Let's move on. Rob Moeller says, huge thank you to you, Josh. His YouTube ch- his YouTube channel was huge in getting me off the ground with video work, editing, shooting, grading, everything. And if it wasn't for mm. his video with me, Ben, <laughs> where they talk hey, about Black Widow Cream, I may have never found this amazing crew. I haven't nice. put together a critique post yet, but the quality of content, motivation, and help everyone post has been amazing. So big ups to Josh. You're the man. That wasn't even a question. That was just a really fucking nice comment. Hey, now. I like those. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. You're the man, I'm glad you're in the group. Um, Josh Brendez says, if you could go back to when you first started uploading to YouTube, what advice would you give yourself? Who are some of the underground YouTubers who are doing things differently? And um, when you first start uploading to YouTube, should you focus on quality or quantity? Lots of questions lot of for questions. you, dog. A lot of questions. Okay, so what would I do differently if yeah. I... Um, or what advice would you give yourself now if you were to start a channel? For me. I'm going to start the Black Window Cream channel, Josh. What should I do, dude? Um, okay, so advice. Make sure you learn how to – you're great with this, but I was, like, great with this. Understand the importance of thumbnails. Mm. Number one, thumbnails and titles. Your video may be dope, but if no one can find it, then it doesn't count. So psychologically, people only click on thumbnails that look dope, and they only click on videos that have titles – that they are able to search in the first place. Mm -hmm. So if you have a vlog, don't name it John's Vlog, number one. Name it, Why Do Cats Always Land on Their Feet? Or I Just Saw a Dead Guy in the Forest. Oh, yeah, it's bad. Oh, wait, no. (laughs) (laughs) Not touching that. (laughs) (laughs) No, Uh, but anyway. No, you're uh, absolutely right. And I think your your thumbnails are shit. You're so good at creating these. Yeah, solid. 
Who are uh, some underground YouTubers who are doing things differently? Who do you like? Oh, this is ah, I'm gonna go channels? brain dead, but there are definitely channels that I see. I come across. Okay, let me try to think. So, um, there's one channel. I talked to him once. Um, it's like it's called How to Video Edit. How to video edit. Yeah. Hmm. I can't remember names. Just like y'all can't remember the name of my channel. Right. Olufemi Tutorials. It's gotta be. Shout out to the Nigerians. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, like the that's, new tagline. That's how it is. <laughs> Shots to the Nigerians. <laughs> oh, that means like, a Nigerian. Yeah. Uh, so uh, think about it if it comes to you. Yeah, bring it yeah. Up. It's um, good, yeah. When you first start uploading YouTube, should you focus on quality or quantity? Um, definitely quantity, but you should have. I mean, definitely quality, but you should have quantity. They're both important. You can't just upload one video a month like I was doing for a little mm-hmm. bit. Um. You've seen a spike as you started posting more. I think so. I yeah. Imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. It just gives. And, and would you say that it's important to kind of like coin times and and dates or whatever when you're going to post? Like, um, saying yeah. my name's Josh and I post a video every Wednesday or whatever. I, do you do I, that? I don't do that, and I should. Here's why you should. Um, the way that algorithm works, as I understand, is if you post a video and a lot of people watch it or interact with it, they're going to share it with even more people slowly until your entire theoretically fan follow fan base is reached. If everyone on your fan base tech theoretically knows that you're gonna release a video at a certain time, they're gonna be ready to jump and click on it. And that just allows that algorithm to actually take an effect and allow that video to be shared and shared more and more hmm. faster. And so that vari- vari- Vra- vari- variety for viral or virality. virality, virality. effect takes. <laughs> Damn. Please. So then, why don't you do that? Um, it's a good question. It's a good question. My manager tells me that I should do this all the time. Um, it's 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 a time management thing. For so sure. like, um, it is hard, guys, when you're busy to hit those deadlines. Um, but there are channels that do it, and I think they're successful because of it. So mm-hmm. if you guys are starting up and coming channels, start that early. Just have a schedule and stick to it. Right. Upload a video every Friday. Black Widow Cream Podcast release every Sunday, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, snap. I aim for yes. 6 p.m. now. That's a new thing. Dang. Okay. Before, sometimes it'd be midnight or 1 a.m. Uh, I would do that. Monday. I would like, my, my, my thing that I used to do is I would just, I, I would like spend hours editing a tutorial and I'd edit at 3 a.m. And just like, I'd want the, the, satisfaction. the satisfaction of just, okay, guys, watch it now. Yeah. And enjoy it. <laughs> and like, like no views and like he's just... like no views and so it's like oh yeah okay patience um, right time yeah my homie mark less aka mike less said hmm. um to follow up with josh's question what kind of goals do you set for yourself when it comes to your youtube channel where do you see your channel going from here we kind of talked about that I'm, i didn't pre-read these before we did talk about that but i mean mm-hmm. if there's something else that you're gonna add to it feel free scaling scaling and um, and schedules yeah scaling scheduling um oh this is like okay let me just put this out there better as well i would like an interview with uh colin tilly oh i just met him uh <laughs> randomly i met him too <laughs> yeah, i know you did but i just like <laughs> for a second li- three day, uh shout out just, to uh, shout out to all the creators out there that work with colin tilly uh Tell yeah, him, tell him to hit me up. Dude's talented. He's a talented. Guy. You guys, you should have him on your channel. No, so sure. yeah, I, and I, yeah, yeah. He's it's good. in the works. It's I should tell him. It's gonna happen. I was with uh, Andrew at the Jeezy show, and we like were backstage, and then everyone was getting pushed around by security to go to certain spots, and we were standing there. Uh-huh. I lost Andrew for a second, and then I found him. I like walked over, and Jeezy's performing like right below us, and then he like pointed, and at first I thought it was someone else, and I was like, oh, what's up? And he's whatever. It was loud, so I was just that was my introduction. Uh huh. And then I turned around and I was like, who was that? I was like, why do I know who that was? And then I realized it was Colin. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. And then we kind of like tried to get somewhere else and we all got lost. And it was, it is what it is. But it was random. That's dope. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's a legend. Yeah, look him up if you guys don't know look him. Look him up, guys. Look him up. If you don't you know. Need, you need to know. Yeah, you got to know. Um, as far as going back to, to your, the, the thing we were talking about with scheduling, would you say that what things could you put in place for this to become easier to do for you to truly mm. like says i think a schedule would improve your viewership obviously for anybody Probably, that's yeah. listening 
um, just Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Thursdays and Tuesdays, whatever it is. Yeah. Obviously, like for me at this point, like right now, this podcast we're recording won't come out for three weeks. Like I'm back, I'm backlogged, which is great for me because if next two weeks get busy and I'm shooting every day, Mm -hmm. like I could be fucked and I wouldn't have any content to put out. So yeah, you know what I mean? This helps. Batch, batch, uh, batch shooting. Yeah. Would you say, is that something that would help? Yeah. Shooting stuff. Uh, I think it's called batch shooting, batch editing. Like if you make a lot of videos and then slowly release them, if your channel, is it based on the need for current events? Mm -hmm. Like I think that would totally work for my channel. Right. Um, I would generally advise don't do it too far because people kind of they're generally like the idea, the notion that they're seeing you in almost real time. But like, yeah, you do shoot something at the beginning of the week, you release it at the beginning of the next week or the end of that week. That's fine. But what would what would, what could you do or what would help you? Because if anyone's listening, they want to try to contribute to this in whatever way possible. What helps no. you get to that position where you said you're busy? Obviously, like real life is a thing. Like family whatever it might be yeah. you have real life things to do and you're probably taking jobs outside of you just doing youtube shit just to pay bills mm-hmm. um every once in a while so like could you see is it more staff is it more you know yeah like um more uh definitely having a team is great um it's something that i want to continue to do um and build uh i'm getting to the point where freelance was taking up a lot of, I mean, having a job and freelance was taking up a lot of time. It'll take up, you already know this, um, it takes up more time than you, you would expect. So cutting back from that, being able to kind of maybe manage your finances a little bit more wisely so you can just survive off of like, say, digital product sales, right. um, that will free up your time a ton. Hmm. Yeah. For sure. That's dope. Um, Lamont yeah. Belton says, this young dude made me rethink my whole game. <laughs> That's it. He didn't say. So, Aww, thank you. <laughs> shout out to Josh for fucking this guy's life up. Uh, he's like, I am now an editor. Good. I find your channel, and I am the best editor. For sure. I, I think if Good. anyone goes and finds your channel, they're gonna learn a shit ton about this whole industry. And you know, how many hours of content is on your channel? Is that does, does YouTube tell you that? Uh, I don't know. So much That's content. A ton. I mean, so, so many more hours of creating the content. Like, yeah. Yeah, you're spending thousands of hours just making this stuff. Yeah. The amount of work that goes into creating a channel like this is ridiculous. Like and I and for me being on his stuff, it's like he's driving out of his way to come to wherever we're at to like interview us real quick and just get what he needs. And then he's going back somewhere else. He's chopping all that up. He's adding all this stuff. Shout out to Ventura County. Yeah, Ventura County. Ventura County. Um County. last question. Tommy Corral. He says, Lal, he was how I found out about the group. Actually, the first tutorial by him I watched. Never mind. It wasn't a question. Dope, these no. are just all these comments that people. No, I love that. You. It's so encouraging. Yeah, you know? yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, but yeah, man, I think it's it's good that what you're doing, and I think that you make a huge dent on in the entire world uh, as far as creating content. The fact that I could be in Germany and find your video as like one of the first videos to pop up is ridiculous to me. Yeah. So what's well, like a juicy story that we could tell to end this if we that we're like gonna like tell like a story? We could talk about. Um, how you as an intern, damn, both of my my lights just died. That's trash. Um, uh-huh. You as an intern were able to edit the. Remember when we we did um in the Chris Brown video, it was the royalty series. Yeah. Or the royalty video, which is like the last one. He finds his daughter and he wakes up. It was all a dream or whatever. Yeah. And then you got to edit a bunch of the glitch, glitchy. Oh, like, remember you got that's to edit a good that story. Yeah. So as an intern, you're getting. A stab at editing a Chris Brown and music. You did video. the intro, and I did the intro for it. So like we came yeah. together and our intro blended with the. That was sick. Yeah, that was sick. That was that was a fun experience. That one experience was a very very fun experience. It was crazy. crazy. Yeah. I mean, it was I still just remember that night and day working on that project. It was a, it was a long run, but I mean, yeah, yeah, you've come super far from that. I'm excited that you get to go bounce around in Australia and, and come back to the states and just create content and shit, but. Yeah, I just want to see you make more. I want to get on YouTube ah, every yes, day. Yes, I want to see you make more. And do my brush my teeth and shit. And just have you playing in the background. Hey. It's like listen to hey what guys. you guys are saying. Be like, damn it, I just learned Chill. something new from Josh. What's up, Ben? Yeah, with your mic, yeah. you'll get a lavalier mic. This dude's been using a handheld microphone for since the beginning of time, basically. Yeah, and it looks really funny. It's like, it's <laughs> but a, we're also wearing he- it's headphones. It's a thing right now that we look like we're supposed to be playing video games, like or uh, sports announcers. If people got this far. 
um, listening to this podcast, I always let you, the guests, pick a hashtag that they should tweet at us. Do you have Twitter? I do, but I never use it. Okay. So this is do what they're going to do. you use Twitter? I, I use Twitter, but okay. um, get on our Instagram, go to Josh's Instagram, and yeah. you're going to post in there and tag me in it, and they can say this hashtag. You get to choose whatever hashtag you want. I know, a good one. Okay. Well. Keep it chill. My catchphrase. Keep it chill? Uh, hashtag keep it chill. And then also hashtag shout out to the Nigerians. <laughs> <laughs> if you can spell Nigerian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, nah, man. Is there anything else you want the people to know or, or where can they find you and all that? Uh, Obviously, I'll put that in the show notes. But Yeah. Uh, keep creating. Uh, do not be discouraged. Um, when you see artists that are crazy, crazy talented, I always tell people on my channel, everything can be broken down any any sort of crazy incredible artistic piece can be broken down into an empirical process mm. and what hopefully you learn from my channel and any other channels you tutorial channels you watch is that uh if you learn those tools you can learn a bunch of tools and that just makes that re-engineering process easier and easier God. you heard it first all right dog i appreciate having you on here bro it's always a pleasure thank man. you very much um yeah so we're just gonna go uh Go end the podcast and maybe make a YouTube video. Yeah, what maybe. time is it? I don't know what time it is. We'll see. But uh, how do you want to end this? Just say something funny and I'll cut it. You guys are great. I love you guys. <laughs> uh, this has been great. We are at an undisclosed location in the middle of Hollywood, California. Right in between Hollywood and Sunset. On <laughs> right in the middle of everything. I am in a very beautiful apartment. Is this a condo? Uh, I don't know what it is. it's an apartment. I think it's a, it's a huge television studio. On this other side of this camera is like a huge staff. <laughs> this like, is so funny how long this outro is becoming. Like we're just still now we're having like another conversation. So, uh, <laughs> we're in this beautiful. Blah, blah. So, all right, uh, go yeah. buy Josh's uh, everything on his Love channel. Go to luxuryleaks.com. Buy all the shit on there because every dollar helps him make more shit. And uh, yeah, okay, bye. Ba ba ba. That's it for episode 23 with Josh and Abakre. Thank you for tuning in and listening. Make sure to follow Josh on Instagram and YouTube and start fucking with all his content. I share links in the show notes. You can find that at blackwindowcream.com slash podcast. Leave a review on iTunes and let me know what you loved about this interview. If you're interested in joining Black Window Cream's private group for creators, visit bwnc.com slash join. And last but not least, buy some of the merch, man. That shit helps me out. Um, subscribe to Black Window Cream on every platform. New episode every single Sunday. See you next week, you bitch. You bitch.